I know there we have over 2,000 people on the platform at the moment. So um, hi to everyone. Um, there are some SNAs, uh, the majority are seem to be from primary school going on the questionnaire that went out this morning. So thanks to the almost 2,000 people who replied uh, to those. Um, for those of you, I know there are a few who are not SNAs. Um, they're working in different places in the school. Um, some of it will be relevant, some of it won't. The idea behind this hopefully is to give everyone a sense of confidence in the f there's a number of platforms that will be helpful. Um, the circular that went out last week is not helpful. Um, it is confusing to everyone, um, including principals, including um, teachers, and definitely to SNAs as well. Um, there's an awful lot of things that do not cover. Um, they can't fall into play with our contract. It doesn't fall into play with the HSC guidelines. It doesn't fall into play with um, school guidelines. So we're not going into the ins and outs on that, but one thing we are looking at is with remote support and what is available there. So at least hopefully people will be able to have some kind of confidence. We have people who have zero technology um, experience, who have no confidence in, experience or in technology, and that's, uh, that's perfectly fine with some people who are quite confident and just look to upskill a little bit more. So I know James is planning to look into Google Classrooms, um, Microsoft Teams, Zoom, and a couple of other platforms. So hopefully um, you will get something from this when his sound starts out again. Um, Judy, do you want to go into what sure. you were talking about? Great. Thanks, Tara. So lovely to meet all of you. My name is Judy Russell, and I kind of started out my journey as a broadcasting journalist um, for a TV show in Costa Rica. And then I came back to Ireland and trained up in television and video production and kind of learned all the technical stuff behind it. And now I teach people how to make videos, mainly using their phone. But ever since this, I'm kind of showing people how to use the camera to their advantage and kind of as well, similar to what Tara said, is gain confidence when presenting to camera so that you know that you're presenting yourself in the most engaging and best way that you can. So I'll just run through five tips that you can use to kind of improve your video presenting skills and, uh, and how you set it up so that your students and uh, the people who are watching you um, are delighted by what you're showing them on the screen. There is, of course, we're also bearing in mind that there's an awful lot of things, as I said, are not covered by our by GDPR and that. So everything that we will be looking to do, you do, um, you're not on your own in SNA suddenly taking on the whole responsibility. James has jumped back into the room. Are you with us, James? Hello. Um, Hello, James. Oh, hi, how are you? How's that? Sorry about that. Can you still hear me? Yes. Yep, yeah, we can hear oh, you. Awesome. My sincere freaking apologies. Um, technology at its best. Technology at its best. So I, I must apologize. Thanks to Tara for, for jumping in there and Judy. Um, I think what I was miming earlier was that I was really delighted that some people have taken the opportunity, I suppose, to jump into this training. And, and really, like, it, we, we talk about it being training, but it's more about us giving a sense of um, you feeling comfortable. And, and you know, they're, they're very uncomfortable times in many ways. And I think what's most important for me is that those people that are on our courses, there are six or 700 people that have taken our online assistive technology course. I really want to support that group. I want to support any SNAs that have sort of worked with us or engaged with us in any sort of face-to-face -face training. And really what I want to do is to put as many resources potentially in place to help you in whatever you do end up finding yourself um, in in the next few weeks, whatever that may well be. And I think Tara, I could, I could hear you, Tara, in, in the background okay. there. So. So thank you. Um, what we did, you know, what, what I did here is that there's lots of uncertainty um, we're not terribly sure in, in, in around privacy. That's so important as well. And I, I know that um, Judy jumped in there as well in terms of her own background, but I, she's going to share a, a lot. And we, we have some slides from her as well in terms of how you can present better on TV and or on TV on, on camera. And I think um, just to kind of give you a sense of my general setup, right? I'm going to grab my 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 mic here and just show you because I think it's important that you see the reality. So the reality is that I have this um, backdrop behind me. So it's literally a, a standard backdrop in my room. And uh, this this is really my desk. Okay. Um, so as you can see, there's a, there's a window here 
behind me, just over there. So that's giving me some good natural light. Um, so I'm not going to take any more from your session, Judy. Only that I took a few of your tips and hopefully, um, yeah, this sort of layout and, and general structure works a bit better. So I, what I want to do uh, initially is just to pick up on some of the really interesting comments that came up um, from people on the survey. And, and, and Tara was going to touch in upon a few of those. So if you don't mind awfully, I just want to jump into one or two of them because I highlighted a few. I don't know, Tara, if you picked out a few that really stood out to you. And a lot of people um, that are concerned about, especially if you're in the school setting or in an autism class, um, mm. that there are some things that are not possible to do over technology. And I think that's important to, uh, to acknowledge as well. The circular that came out doesn't cover an awful lot of children that we work with. It doesn't cover the type of schools that we have in Ireland. Um, so I think there, um, it's important to be able to acknowledge to yourself um, and to discuss it with your colleagues that there isn't, there isn't going to be a catch-all answer for this. There's a lot of things that aren't going to be possible, um, but we're going to look at what will be possible. Um, and of course, and I, and I think to, all in different I think just to pick up on your point there, Tara, in, in terms of um, in terms of the circular that came out and like that that came out just a few weeks ago. Obviously, I know that uh, we were just saying that there was an update potentially that came out this morning from um, from the trade union forces. So, like there is going to be an updated circular qu quite soon coming out, right? Yeah. Um, did you read much on that this morning? Yes. Yeah. So, um, like the head of education with um, FOSA, the trade union that works for non SA this morning um, released a statement saying that he was speak to the department yesterday and the one of the areas that um and FORSA from the start have said that's not something going to um they're going to go along with. So this morning they said that it will be remote services. So I suppose that ties in nicely with what we're doing. Um, so we can only work with what is safe for ourselves. There's an awful lot of people that are sick and they're worried about themselves um, and their own protection and the protection of their families. So hopefully this will give some kind of confidence in what is possible from a remote. Yeah, that, that's, that's such an important point. I, I think that um, only recently, uh, I might have shared it last week, but there's this whole thing around, you know, you're not necessarily working from home. You know, you're, you're working from home during a crisis, right? Crisis. And and there's nothing more realistic. Um, and I think for, for SNA specifically, especially what came out from the minister way back there, you know, two or three weeks ago, in terms of that um, or Plaza statement that, that he made, I, I think that there was a lot of uncertainty around that. And really, not to get into the, the political um, arena, like, but I, I think what I want to do here is more highlight some of the technology and, and what you will get. And this is really just to bring. Uh, SNAs together, you know, there's almost two, there's, all, there's over 2,000 people that, that took the chance to log on this morning. Um, I, I apologize that there's, you know, some technical issues, but trying to stream to like 2,000 people at the one time is difficult from, from multiple locations. Um, and so what I do want to promise you is that you will get follow-up email. We will help you in terms of any sort of technical issues that you might have in terms of re remote learning. Um, and there will be a follow-on email to what we do today with lots of resources around the main types of technology that, that we think are key. And, and I do appreciate as well from looking at the survey, every school is using something different, you know. So it might be Microsoft, it might be Google School, you might be a school that isn't using anything at all. And you know, that's okay too. Um, and so I think that the starting point here is just being, I suppose, being comfortable again, like I said at the start there, being comfortable with the uncomfortable and you don't have to go on video you know it could just be an audio note um it could be just something that you send over and back via google drive so it's just think about what you're most comfortable with i think that's the most important starting point is that it doesn't have to be and i know judy's going to touch on like how you look phenomenal on video later but it doesn't have to be on video like please keep that in mind that you don't have to always be on video um, and nor does your child have to be and I just spoke to two or three SMAs yesterday afternoon uh, that their school and their principal had taken the stance that um, they were going to do remote um, support but not remote video support 
So there's either just going to be phone calls or email um, and, and that they weren't going to have any interaction in terms of video. So just be very clear um, that you don't necessarily have to, to, to go on video. And just you know, be clear in terms of what's going to work for you. And, and again, um, just looking at the survey results there, like lots of people seem to have access to a laptop, but a lot of people are still working off of phones, you know, and I think that's a, that's a key thing to bear in mind that you might have an Android phone or an iPhone or maybe a laptop somewhere or an iPad at home. Like, what is it that feasibly you can do with those devices that can support students? And first and foremost, I suppose it's about supporting the student, uh, maybe that, that you have worked with over the last while and what does that look like and how can you support them? Um, Tara, I know that we looked at the circle yesterday in a bit of detail. Like, just from your perspective, what are the, the three or two or three key things you see that people will potentially possibly be doing in terms of supporting students? So one thing they spoke about was um, having daily phone calls um, or daily FaceTime. FaceTime straight away is a no-no for all schools because our accessible usage policy, which would be the the policy that all schools legally have to have in place regarding internet will tell you quite categorically that you do not communicate with um, families via your personal social media. Um, so I think they put that in as um, as an idea, but it's I definitely would be contacting your principal um, and asking exactly what is in your policy and. So really, it's a case of kind of touching base with this, the school in terms of the principal. Obviously, that's something that you'll have done already. But just please be, I suppose, aware of, of the, the usage policy that is within the school um, and uh, the fair usage policy. And I think like there's a lot of stuff. Um, just just think about it from a, a privacy perspective, a GDPR perspective. And if, if you're not sure what that is, just ask, you know, like ask either uh, your principal or whatever teachers you're engaging with. Um, and, and, and just make sure that you're aware of what's in there because, I mean, what really makes me cringe is when I saw um, that you could potentially start using WhatsApp, for example. Um, and and, I, and I, I truly believe that that is a no-go, really, um, unless, and, and like there's always there's always a few caveats, right, unless you have this phenomenal, really good relationship with the family or something. I, I mean, I, I don't want to um, give you any outliers, but like there might be a case when you use it, but I, I think in the mainstream, we should not be using uh, the likes of WhatsApp because it's a, it's a it's connected to your personal e email or number, possibly email. Um, you should not necessarily be using any forms of social media. So the likes of um, some people were suggesting Facebook groups to connect people. I mean, I, some things that I've got suggestions on is just a little bit outrageous. So just be mindful that we should not and cannot be using social media, the likes of WhatsApp, um, FaceTime is, is similar to using an iPhone device. Like again, that's kind of connected to your number or your your Apple profile. So please just, um, yeah, be somewhat careful in terms of how you use those particular pieces of technology. So what I'm going to do now um, is, is I'm actually going to share the screen and I'm going to jump on and just show you a few pieces. So to give you a sense of the pieces of technology that most people seem to be familiar with, um, and the, the most things that people have a sense of is, again, like the, the Google, Google Hangouts. Uh, it is Microsoft Teams, if you're a Microsoft school. Um, it is the likes of Zoom. So we're all familiar with Zoom. Um, and, and Zoom is probably something that you've heard a lot of bad publicity about uh, in, in the last two or three weeks. That's probably something certainly that's been coming up. Um, I've done a lot of work in and around using Zoom. And the nice thing about Zoom is that it's relatively safe and secure uh, is GDPR compliant um, once we put the correct privacy elements in place? Um, Judy, I, I wonder, you're doing a lot of work around Zoom. But what's your take on, on Zoom right now? Well, I suppose it was getting an awful lot of criticism in terms of the privacy stuff. And uh, I was scrolling through LinkedIn one day and a guy put it really well. He said, Zoom is offering more functions and features than any any other um, kind of app out there. Its capabilities are amazing. So of course, it's kind of growing. It's got this exponential growth at the moment, trying to keep up with everything. So it is going to have a few flaws. But what I'm really loving about Zoom is that it's trying to correct everything as quick as it can. So I'm staying on the Zoom bus for now because um, I have done tests with Google Hangouts, Zoom and um, Teams, um, especially test recordings. And 
just the quality wasn't nearly as good as the um on teams and hangouts as it was on zoom so i'm staying with it yeah i mean i i, I certainly like zoom i think why i want to cover zoom um predominantly is that uh, if you don't have another option and and so if you're if your school are a microsoft school then yeah absolutely 100 percent please um just straighten my camera there 100 percent please go for it and, and and use it um however if your school is a, is a google school you know then that's something that you should be using please obviously adhere to whatever school are kind of suggesting however if there's not something in play if there's not something set up already then you know something like zoom is really nice and the other thing i want to touch on there's two pieces of technology that i want to touch on that you might not have used um and that is flipgrid I don't know if you want to chuck into the chat there if anybody has used Flipgrid or not. Um, so, so Flipgrid is one of these things that is probably really useful. Um, it's a Microsoft tool. It's something that Microsoft have bought out in the last few years, and it works really, really well for primary school, uh, special schools, and, and actually I've seen it work in, in secondaries as well. So you don't have to be on video. It can be audio. We can give people something to, you know, we can give students or a group of students or one particular student something to work with, and it's just a nice two-way communication. And again, completely GDPR compliant in terms of privacy, it should meet most privacy um, statements within schools, and it's being used in lots and lots of schools already. So Flipgrid for me, if you don't have something already set up and you're curious about getting something, it's really nice. It comes with an app that can be put on your iPhone or an Android phone or your laptop, um, and, and it works really well, and it's very engaging for the students. It's it's quite creative, I suppose, in many ways. The other one I'm going to touch on is a one called Loom, um, and so Loom is one where you can uh, re screen record, and you can also record from the webcam. So it'll be me, my face in the bottom, and then the recording of the screen, and then you can send that link to either the, the children via email if it's a school email account, or else you can send it to their parents. You know, so it's just about working in what that looks like. Um, I think that's kind of the key point. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now. OK, so I'm, I'm going to start. Um, I'm actually going to start off with Zoom, if that's OK. Um, but I, I've just opened up Zoom here. So I'm, I'm gone into Zoom. Um, I'll send you out the link in terms of how to set this up. I'll send you out some really nice short videos on how to set this up as well. So if you're in a school. There's no setup. You're not terribly sure. You want to use potentially something like Zoom. I'm just going to go ahead here and show you how to schedule a meeting or how to set up a meeting. So I click on schedule a meeting. And you know, like this, this might be uh, like it might be a weekly meeting, maybe weekly session with John. OK, so I, I type in the, the topic then I can give it a description. Maybe this is something we're going to do. It might be an interactive piece or you might have sent them some work and you, you, you might want to review back with them or it's just a support call. It could be just a 20 minute, 10 minute check in with a parent. I set the date, I set the time, possibly the duration. And so what you see here, if you set up a meeting in Zoom, by default, there's a meeting password. Okay, and, and that's quite important just, just to keep that in mind. Um, uh, obviously, we, when you set up a meeting, what you don't want is you don't want the minute you open that meeting or you open it on your app, um, is for your video to appear. So, so we want to keep video, the host video off we want to keep the participants' video off as well, so that when you open your Zoom meeting, you're not like sh shuffling around the room trying to find your webcam or trying to find your iPad or you know. So give yourself a few seconds to make sure the video is turned off initially. Um, audio is fine, and then let me just hit save here. So now that me that meeting is now set up for the 15th at 12 o'clock today. Meeting with John. If I want to send him that meeting, so if I want to send him that meeting, this is the URL that that particular student or his parents will open. Um, and that is what they will see. And then you'll also send them this password. So you can either copy this invite or you can send them an, in, an email directly. So you, you can start the meeting yourself directly. You can send that invite directly out to either the parent and or the student, whichever, whichever works best. And again, that would be very much dependent on the student. Um, my advice personally would be that um, like I worked a lot with education psychologists over the last weeks. And we talked about how can you best, I suppose, set yourself up in terms of um, child protection and privacy and whatnot. And, and the best course of action really is that to try and make sure that the parents are potentially in the room when you're having either that, if it is a video conversation or a phone conversation, that they're potentially in the room or at least within the vicinity 
when that call is taking place. And I think that's just that's just a side note that I I would uh, I would run with. So um, I suppose firstly, I saw a number of comments come in with a few people say that like video isn't for everyone and it's 100 percent not. And just in case you think that like I effortlessly kind of can present a camera, I can't. Like when I first started presenting, I remember being so nervous and like sick all the time. But I kind of loved the rush. But I actually still get that feeling now, even after years of presenting. So, you know, I, I don't I think it doesn't go away, but use it to your advantage. Um, so I'm going to go through five simple steps to improve your video presentation and the first one the most important thing of all is that is to record excellent sound so in video school and on sets people often say that video is 90 percent sound and i hate hearing statistics that don't have any backup so i went and tried to find a study that actually could prove this and i think it was cleveland state university did a study with a number of gamers so they put them into a room with hd video and sd video and then they put them into another room with mono sound and stereo sound and the results indicated that while image quality had no effect on outcomes sound quality almost universally impacted outcomes of interest including several dimensions of presence and enjoyment so the gamers who had sd and hd or high definition or standard definition video didn't care didn't affect them but when they had bad sound versus good sound they actually felt that they didn't enjoy the game as much. So we need to make sure that the sound that we put on to videos is as good as we can do. And a few things or a few ways to do this is to go into the room where you plan on recording yourself to camera, whether it's to your phone or your laptop, and close your eyes and listen to the sound for five seconds. Um, because there could be something in the room that's actually really noisy, like a computer or a fridge in the background or something like that, and it's making this like hum, or your windows might be open and you can hear birds, and that will all come into your sound recording. So try to kind of remove any of those unwanted sounds. In some rooms, they're just really noisy. Maybe you're really close to a street and there's traffic going past. So then I'd suggest moving rooms to go to the, where the best sound is. External microphones can be really good as well. Um, right now, I'm actually plugged into one of these um, plug-in headsets that just because I couldn't get the sound on my laptop working. My laptop sound is actually really good, and most laptops are because they have this microphone that captures everything around it. With our phones, it's a little bit different because we kind of need the phone to be held up right to our mouth in order to get the great sound. So I usually use an external microphone with my phone, but with the laptop, I'm actually finding it really good in all the Zoom meetings that I'm listening to and things, they're good. James is using the AirPods. If you have them, try them. But what I'd suggest is do a few tests with different, with using your laptop sound, your phone sound, and then any other kind of headphones with an inbuilt mic on them too. And, uh, and that's test and listen back. So you'll be really surprised while at the time you might think that they all sound the same, when you listen back with headphones in, you're like, oh my God, that one is much better. And uh, your viewers will really thank you afterwards. The second thing to do is to stabilize and position the camera. So there's nothing worse than a rocky camera during a recording. It makes your audience really dizzy. And uh, so I actually try to separate myself from the table that the laptop or the phone is on. Um, with a phone, you can make a DIY tripod using a reusable cup. Just make two incisions and stick it into it. And uh, with your laptop, just try and get a table and books underneath it or something like that to get it perfectly stable. And why I say books underneath it is because you want to have the camera at eye level. Um, I'm just going to show you there, you know, this kind of thing when you're looking down, you're kind of Kevin Spacey in House of Cards, kind of domineering look. And, uh, and then when you're looking up, you're kind of, you know, subservient and stuff like that. So what you want to do is get the camera just at eye level without too much headroom between the top of your head and the top of the frame. So we don't want to be like this if at all possible, we want to try and be like this. That's kind of a nice frame now. Um, keep your distance. So this allows me to kind of feel a bit back from the people watching so they don't feel like I'm kind of up in their face, kind of smothering them for the entire thing. I like to try and sit back and that's why I use a clicker with my slides and this little ring clicker I got on Amazon and it allows me to just click through the slides and remain, retain a relaxed position also without having to hit the laptop and kind of make the, the thing shaky again. Um, so that's step two. Step three is to light yourself up. Lighting is so important. So once you figure out the best room for sound, now go and figure out where the window is. And right here, I don't have any like um, artificial lights on me. I just have the sun 
over here actually, but shining in through these three windows in front of me and illuminating my face. And um, because the viewer is drawn to the brightest part of the frame, so you wanna try and make sure that there's an even light on top of you. Now, you might not always be able to record during the day or you might not be able to record near a window. And in that case, I'd just try and find a few household lamps. And rather than pointing it directly onto your face, that kind of gives a two dimensional look, try and get one lamp and point it on this side of your face and another lamp and point it at this side of your face and try and get them kind of even and it gives a much nicer look. And um, the reason I know that the sun is over here, it travels across this way at, at different times of the day is because of the app called Sun Surveyor Light. It will let me know where the sun will be at different times. So I, when I'm doing pieces to camera, I actually try and wait until three or four o'clock so that the sun is kind of over here, not shining in the window. So I'm squinting, but bright enough to reflect off everything outside and, and just give a nice light to my face. Um, step four then is to design your background. So I'm actually ashamed, to be honest, uh, James has completely outdone me in terms of how he looks on video today with his lovely screen. Um, this is a paper background. I actually, I'm working from a tiny house as I'm in isolation with my mother. Uh, I'm just next door to her in kind of a cabin. So it, it's a terrible place for filming. It just, it doesn't look right at all. So I bought these paper backgrounds and I put them up behind me. But just as we started, the entire thing collapsed and uh, and now the paper I can see in the background, it's all like kind of uh, rustled and, and ruined. And I'm like, it's really annoying me, but I'm trying to ignore it. But just try and get some kind of blank wall or something like that. Separate yourself a bit from it so there aren't loads of shadows going behind you. Um, and that way the viewer kind of stays on you. Their focus remains on your face and the person speaking rather than them kind of looking around your room going, oh, that's a nice uh, shelf there. I wonder where she got that, you know. Um, then the next step and the final step is presenting with confidence. So the first thing to do is to dress the part. Dress as if you were going to meet the people in person. Um, you can still wear Uggs because they usually don't, uh, they can't be seen on camera, but it's really important to just get dressed up and, and to, or how you normally would be anyway, and to just feel that confidence from looking as, as good as you would if you met them in person. Also wear powder. So our faces get really, really shiny on camera. So I always keep powder beside me. Um, and this is for everyone now on RT. They won't let you go on to the interviews without powder on your face. So I would suggest either stealing some from some from someone that you live with or even just get some tissues and just dab them on your face before you go on. Camera requires a bit more energy than you'd bring in person. I don't know why it just kind of dims down our personalities a bit. So I always try to bring 10% more of my personality when I'm presenting on camera because it is a bit of a performance, you know, so you kind of have to keep the audience engaged by using different vocal pitches, kind of bringing excitement, changing the speed and tone of your voice, things like that. Show your hands. I'm really handsy. That's why I like the, the ring clicker as well, because it allows me to do jazz hands intermittently throughout my presentations. Um, but people will actually trust you more when they can see your hands. So just try not to sit like this for the entire thing. Looking into the lens is so important. It's like making eye contact with your viewer. So you can see the difference here now between when I look at the screen and this is just the screen and it's a tiny distance away from the lens. But now when I'm looking into the lens, it actually feels like I'm looking at you and you probably would find it harder to look away than if I was looking down here. You're probably like, well, she's not looking at me. I can get away with not looking back. And um, the next thing to do is to pretend you're speaking to someone you know. Obviously, we're talking to a tiny piece of technology. It's really weird. But what the professional broadcasters used to do back in the day is put a picture of someone that they knew or loved up next to the camera to remind them, firstly, that they're speaking to one person at a time. And secondly, that there's a human going to be watching it in the end. And then the best thing you can ever do is to watch yourself a lot. There's so much psychology stopping us from being the great presenter that we can be. There's a confirmation bias. We will find evidence to confirm anything that we already believe. So if you think you're terrible at presenting, you will prove to yourself that you are terrible at presenting. And there's familiarity bias. So we're not familiar with seeing ourselves in camera. So we have to keep watching ourselves over and over again to uh, to get this right. So then I'll just end on um, 
the 10 day video challenge is something that I'm offering for free to everyone. And uh, there's 10 days of small video challenges. Now it might not get you to be better at presenting to camera, but um, I, I've used, a lot of teachers are using it to kind of do something with their students and stuff. So there's things, simple things. Um, so yeah, the 10 day video challenge is available on um, the vidacademy.com. Um, and it's again, simple and interactive and fun. And you can do it with your whole family and stuff like that. So that's it from me super stuff super stuff so certainly um if people get the opportunity to take that 10 day challenge or even mash 10 days into uh into five that'll be that'll be pretty impressive um yeah i, I think some of those points are, are really really important I, I i do i was laughing actually i was looking through the comments as you were chatting and, and one woman i can't remember the name but she said cheekers powder i better get a chance to wash my face and <laughs> um, so you know it's really it's really important actually like that it's not as easy um, I suppose as you know like getting up and, and, and having yourself set up with your, at your backdrop and whatever like I'm just lucky today that my wife Kate could take Oshin outside so you don't hear him crying outside the door um, and I could spend like a half an hour or an hour kind of setting up the room but look that's not the reality for, for a lot of people and it's really about you just kind of jumping in and out so I'm going to try once more to, to share my screen if technology allows just as you're trying to do that, James, as well, I think you brought up something really good is the fact that like it's it's such a strange time that like no one's expecting perfection at the moment. And now's the time <coughs> to take the risks and make the mistakes, whether it's through video, setting up Zooms or through anything, even setting up booklets and stuff. You know, people aren't going to be as as hard on people yeah. as they would be usually. Well, hopefully people won't be as hard on us today. But uh, no, it's really <laughs> good point. Like practice, right? Like. I, we, we had a session last week with education psychologists and actually Judy, you were on that as well and i heard from a lot of them this week and, and the one thing we said to them was like practice with your son or daughter who's in the front room and you're upstairs practice with, with a nephew or a niece or a cousin or you know just like practice and that literally is what it's all about is just get out there and do it and um obviously it's it's easy for us to say that and i think you need to bear in mind that there's also a lot of other elements in and around the privacy in and around the sort of like um, fair usage policy and that sort of stuff. So just just be mindful of that, obviously as well. Uh, when you get into the real world of it. So let me jump back in and share my screen. <clears throat> okay, so that's all working, people. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. Okay, so I, I I've gone back into Zoom and uh, I've set up a meeting. So I'm just going to schedule a new meeting once more. So I hit schedule a new meeting. So I'm already logged in. I'll, I'll send you the details on this later. I set up a meeting. Uh, this might be like um, you know quick check-in um obviously i'm dyslexic so i struggle to spell uh check in <laughs> with john jesus i need my uh text to speech software um so i'll set the time so that might be this afternoon maybe we're doing a check in at half past three on turkey let's just say it, this is the time it's not going to be that for that long it's going to be for less these don't really matter you know it's just like a quick check-in when you come down here and the key thing i think i said this a little bit earlier and hopefully you picked up on it is that we now need to make sure that we have a meeting password um and then you also maybe want to en enable the waiting room so you, you might have heard a lot of discussion around this whole uh, zoom bombing was that something that, that people have heard there was a bit of zoom bombing going on um and, and literally what was happening with zoom bombing it was a, it was a j club in dublin actually that it happened to and, and the, the really funny not funny thing that happened is that um <clears throat> Those links are going out onto the internet so people could grab them and could just log in at any time. And, and uh, there's a lot of bots that were able to pull up those different links and then jump into them and, and post things that they shouldn't be posting. So, so what you can do here in, in team in uh, Zoom is you can obviously turn on a password. Okay, so the kid has to use a password to log in. But there's also a waiting room. So, so when you log on, um, you will see this waiting room and i think that's one of the key kind of things here is that when the child then logs on you see that it's the child's name and email address and then you can let them into the meeting or into the session that you're going to talk to them with and i think that's kind of a key talk in terms of privacy and security that really is something that you need to be aware of and um, so so now that session let me just jump back over here to my meetings <clears throat> on the left hand side here there's a whole array of settings you know you, you can you can alter the, the account settings um, the room settings, the user settings, depending on the users that are set up. This might you might have a school account, or it might be just your personal account. You know, so so just just be mindful again. Like I said at the very outset, be mindful of what personal information you use. So if it's your personal email address, if it's your personal phone number, 
it's your personal um, Apple ID or whatever, just be mindful in terms of what gets used around Zoom. There's lots of great things that, that we can look into. Um, don't get overly caught up in, in the complexities or the technologies of it. Um, <clears throat> if you're using um, if you're using something like Zoom already, then you know you, you could download the app, pop it onto your phone. If it's an Android or iPhone, it'll work perfectly well. If you're using a laptop, you can just run it through the browser. Um, and again, I'll send out this additional information a little bit later. Let me just jump back here. I want to share my screen once more. This is when my um, ADHD jumps in now, and I'm going to keep jumping around. <laughs> uh, so there's two two ones that are a little bit outside of the norm, right? And and um, the key one here is uh, this Flipgrid, which is really nice, and then there's Seesaw. Uh, a lot of a lot of primary schools might be using an app like Seesaw. That's something that's quite nice. Um, let's just open up Flipgrid. I'll share that with you straight away. So <clears throat> this is Flipgrid. I'm not going to go into it in detail, but again, um, it's a bit like, um, yeah, I, I want to say what, what app it's like, uh, but it's, yeah, I mean, it's a, a little bit like TikTok, I suppose, within reason, but for education, um, if, if that's the correct thing to say. Um, but it literally can be used. I mean, I, I see it mostly used in primary and, and, and secondary, early secondary. But certainly, it could use be used across the board. They have some really good resources. Um, it's normally used as a as a group or a class, but you can set up a small group. So, for example, um, I could set up a, an assignment or like a task for you for the week. You can do it. You can either tell me uh, via video here, so you can go and record a video um, and tell your story to camera, or else if you don't feel comfortable on the camera or the kids don't feel comfortable on the camera, then they can just create an audio recording. Or they can just type something in, um, and and so that, that that comes back to you. You see it, but the family also has a login. Um, again, GDPR compliant, very good in terms of privacy and security. Um, ran by Microsoft, so it's, it really is robust and it works really well for people. So I, I think this certainly would be something that I would use quite a lot. It works on both Android and uh, iPad or iOS, um, and also then obviously you can use it on your laptop. So I'll, I'll send you the details on that. I think that's a lovely one to be using. Something like Flipgrid is really good. Um, there's one more that I'm going to jump on to. <clears throat> yeah, there's a quick comment there from John in, in terms of primary schools moving um, from Seesaw to, to Aladdin. Like Aladdin Connect is a really nice piece of software as well. Um, and Judy's paper just fell down there. That's the, This is the beauty of live. But she turns off her camera. It's a fitting. Um, let, let me share my screen once more. And uh, let's uh, let me show you one more. And uh, that was Flipgrid. So uh, what I want to show you next is a uh, seesaw. I'll just bring it up just so you can see it. Um, so this is seesaw. They have some really nice resources as well. Uh, you can sign up for free, obviously as a as an educator. Um, there's lots of stuff that are there. Like in in normal terms, seesaw again is used as a kind of a two way communication, so that teachers can set learning and set things um, for kids to do as groups. And, and potentially for families to engage as well. However, I think where we currently find ourselves, it really is more about, um, and specifically for SNAs, it is that sort of two-way communication without it being personal and, and us able to step away from the issues around privacy. So something like Seesaw, again, if your school hasn't looked at anything yet, then I think Seesaw would be a really nice way um, to, to, to try it at least, and especially because you're only doing it with a handful of kids, either kids that you know, or potentially kids that you, you might necessarily know, but um, certainly something like this that's really easy to use could work very well. Um, okay, so I'm just going to stop sharing on that. And the, the last one I want to show you before we highlight a few of the key kind of questions that have been coming up. <clears throat> um, yeah, let me go to Loom. All right, so, so people might be familiar with this one, and this, again, is just a little bit left of center as well. It is a way for me to record my screen. Um, so it's a, it's a, it's a video a screen recording, very simply. You don't have to have any technology built in. You can do it all. You just um, sign up to a free account. And what I'm doing, if you just look at this really simple graph that's going on here, this lady in the bottom left, um, it, it'll, it'll record my face as well. So, so it'll, it'll pop me into this little circle in the corner, but it doesn't have to. You can remove that functionality. So you don't have to um, be live. It could be just you showing them like maybe two or three websites you want them to go on to, some activities you want them to do. And it is you with your voice and you can annotate on top. So you can point and click and you know drag things on top of the screens as well. So again, 
Loom is just a nice one. If, if you're, again, looking for something a little bit different, I would say Loom is probably a nice option. Obviously, Google um, Classroom is another one. So, so I just want to pick up on two or three things that came from the um, from the survey. And, and I'll, I'll put this into a bit of detail. But Tari, I, I might come back to you in a second, if you don't mind. Yep. There was two things that, that came up for me, and I just highlighted a few of them. Um, so, so this is a key question. This came, this came, so how do I engage via a technical device when we are so used to doing this in person? Um, and I, and I, I think if I scour through the, the, the 2,000 odd replies that we got, that is one thing that comes up an awful lot. That and how we help kids in terms of meltdowns or behavior issues or, you know, so I, I think that there's something there um, that's really difficult to, to get your head across. And it, it might be you just coming up with kind of strategies in terms of how you can connect to what you would have done in, in, in that sort of personal scenario and what can you maybe bring that, what can you bring across, like what is it that they really like? How can you connect with them on that sort of one-to-one -one personal level, but just make it via video? Um, I don't know, Tara, what your take on it on that is, because it's a very difficult one to, to jump across. Yeah, it's a thing that definitely is not <coughs> coming, um, coming across um, to, I think, to the department that an awful lot of what we do, you do need to be next to the child. And yeah. just as um, if the child doesn't come into the school, in, come into the school if we were in school, we can't control what's happening outside. So if your child is not coming to the computer, it really is the same as if mm -hmm. the child is not coming to class. We can't, we can't get them to communicate. One thing that I have found that's helped um, with me is I've one, one kid in particular who's not engaging with Google Classroom, I have been setting a daily Lego challenge. So he's communicating with his mother, I put a Lego challenge up. Um, he's not yet communicating with the with the teacher, but it's giving that start off um, that every day he has to do some kind, and it, it sets up every at, every day at nine o'clock he gets um, he gets a challenge to do. So and what do you get? Do you get him to take a picture of that and send it to you, or like because that would be a nice thing yeah. too. Maybe we'll have to take a picture of something you've done. It doesn't have to be on video or audio. Yep. So um, no, I. Um, as we've said before, we do not um, advocate for using personal social media. But as for the last number of years, I've been using our school social media. Now, this is set up with school management. Um, it is board of management approved. And our DESH inspectors have also um, approved of this. Uh, so that is a few. Yeah, um, it's a few years. Now, it's not suitable for everyone. But through that, I can set up um, I can put daily challenges. Uh, so his mom then takes a photograph and gives me a little background so I can start up that communication of he's talking about the Lego. He's not talking about what mm. he's doing for school. Um, it, as um, again, with a lot of kids with autism, can find that difficulty with talking directly about their own work or something like that. But talking about Lego is something that he's able to work in with. He's able to jump in and tell me, I created this Lego piece because X, Y, and Z. So he's working on his oral language skills. He is mm. engaging with the with the work, and so then I can feed back to his class teacher that this is the it, this is the feedback he's doing. He's engaging with school in a way that he wasn't doing if he was given an English writing task. Um, there's an awful lot of things that um, we are not going to be able to do. You, obviously, with technology we can't do hand-on-hand -hand work we can uh, if the child walks away from the computer the child has walked away from the computer mm -hmm. and um, we are everything that we are doing needs to be in conjunction with the teachers that work with so our teaching colleagues and principals are just as lost as we are a lot of times it's about communication not, really I think isn't it it really is and they, like you have to know that you are not on your own um, you're not out there trying to suddenly manage um, every child because we are um, like we are SNAs. We're constantly told we don't have a role in pedagogy. So we don't have a role in delivering the education system, but we are working with our teaching colleagues. So I think if you're a lot of principals are not haven't been sending out information and a lot of it because they don't know what information mm -hmm. to send out. And also it's also worth bearing in mind that at the moment we are on our um, we're on our Easter break. That's uh, the INTO 
who the trade union for teachers have told teachers that they are not to be sending out work. Yeah. And a lot of principals have been talking, um, they've been trying to give the SNAs and the teachers they work with that break, which we are entitled to do. Um, we are, you know, our salary is working over, um, over a full school year, which includes our breaks. And it's important to realize that as well, that you need to keep, if you are going to be presenting or if you are going to be dealing with um, questions via social media, um, via platforms like um, Microsoft Teams or Google Classroom, that as much as possible, try and keep to your school hours because you are entitled, yeah. you are entitled to your break outside, uh, just as the students are entitled to a break as well. I think that's often like a lot of the stuff that I, I hear back is that um, it's it's really hard in, in terms of trying to set that schedule during the day, you know, so like we're so used to our nine to, to two thirty or nine to three thirty, whatever it might be. Whereas now we end up maybe it's it works better because parents are working during the day, so we we might connect with a student in the evening or you know after six o'clock or so. Just to be mindful, I suppose, um, of your own time, you know, and and your own mental well-being uh, in, in this yes. whole experience. I think that really is important. So, um, what I again just to reiterate, what, what I'm going to do here is we're going to record um, or we have recorded this session, and so you'll get access to this. I'll pull together some additional materials. You will have Judy's slides. Um, and maybe, uh, Tara, again, just going off the cuff, um, we might even catch up either later today or tomorrow and even yeah. have a bit of a conversation. And we might just even record it. Um, and I think that might be, you know, because we could tease an awful lot out there, I think, if, if we sat down for 20 minutes over Zoom or something and just like chatted. And I'll send that out to, to the whole cohort. And again, um, I'm conscious that I didn't get into doing an awful lot of tech stuff that I really would have liked to have done. So what I will do next week once a week is I, i'll do like a, a kind of a, a drop-in session for, for for snas so i'll do that on our facebook page um i'll send out the details maybe i'll do it on a tuesday or wednesday evening at like 5 30 or 6 for half an hour so if you have any questions you can literally just pop them up and i'll, I'll try and answer them on on that block of time um thank you so much for sticking with us in terms of the uh the tech the tech issues as they fucking hit us and, and as judy's uh, backdrop fell and uh, yeah all the sort of great things that happen in reality but thank you so much for for um taking a bit of time out of your morning well done and, and i and i appreciate it's not the easiest of times in general and it's not the easiest of times for snas right that's the key that's the key thing and that's that all the emails that i've been getting over the last while around the concern and the you know the stress and the worry that it brings and we and tara hit hit the nail on the head at the very start she said like we're worrying about ourselves our own families and our kids out of mind you know our, our schools and our jobs and the kids we support so you know it, it's family first and foremost and you got to look after yourself and your own kind of inner circle um, and obviously your own mental well-being and then only then are we ready and prepared i suppose to, to, to move outside of that so if, if we can do anything in terms of what we're doing around the tech stuff please let us know. Um, um, if there's any questions or if you want to kind of upskill any more, please just let me know. I know that a load of you are already on our courses. So so thank you for taking another hour to listen to me today. Um, we've got about 700 SNAs that, that have taken our online course already. Um, and I'll send out, if you're interested in that, that's 20 hours of kind of continuous CPD. Um, and and it, in most schools, it has gone towards uh, 20 hours of um, you know, your 72 hours or your up to 72 hours of, of potentially crow park hours, whatever the correct term is there. So that's something that, that's certainly there. That's that's fully certified um, by the CPD office in the UK. Um, so again, any questions on that, just let me know or you can get in touch with my colleagues, um, Aaron and or, um, yeah, there's a, whole, there's a whole array of us there or Sarah, we, we'll get in touch too. I'll let you go and uh, thank you so much. Get out there, enjoy the nice blue sky before you have to go back to work next week. Uh, obviously within two kilometers. Um, Judy, thank you so much for your time. Tara, your star. Um, Jolene in the background, you're probably cursing me, but thank you for all the Thanks, tech Jolene. support. <laughs> really appreciate it. All right, guys, thank you so much. Well done. And um, any emails, just get in touch and we'll get back to you over the next day. Thanks, guys. See you soon.